Well, here we go. Just like the street lights lit this town Like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down Can't be afraid to leave this out What's up guys, Shane here and welcome to the video. Uh, I'm just here in Bluff at the moment, getting ready to go and try and spear some fish today. Uh, the conditions are against me so I really don't know if I'm going to bring anything home, but I'm going to damn well try anyway. Uh, conditions are fully against me, we've got 30 knots of winds blowing and um, I'm just keen to get out there in that nice fresh cold water uh, that we have down here and we'll see how we get on I guess. Good thing today is I've got a boat boy, brother Daniel, who's going to come out with me and watch over me and uh, control the boat while I'm in there. Sure, so I've got the boat in the water now. Now our skipper here, Dan. Our wee girl here, Marley, as well. Let's go. Just like a spark that's breaking out Can't make a start, can't turn. So the weather's far too rough out of the harbour today uh, We won't be going heading around the back of the hill or Dog Island, Rupuki, anything like that uh, Far too far too rough around there So we're just sticking inside the harbour uh, Might find a wee place to jump in and have a look around Maybe up and get some of these pullers um, Hopefully it's a nice wee tide ripping through there and it's bringing some fish in so we're just going to park up on these uh, pillars here. Absolutely pissing down, so the boat's sheltered out of this uh, horrible weather. We're sitting at about 12 metres on the sounder. As soon as I jumped in that water, I knew I was in for a tough day at the office right then and there. Um, I loaded my spear gun, I looked up out of the water and the boat was about 30 metres away and uh, I was just finning like crazy. The current was mad ripping through there, um, which makes it really tough to dive. You can't relax, you can't get a good breathe up and um, when you go down to the bottom, um, when you're going under the water, it just makes it, it pulls you around and you just can't relax basically. Yeah, so I was about here that I thought, uh, should I even carry on this dive? I mean, that current was so strong. Um, every time I'd step out from these poles that I'm sheltering behind, I'd just get ripped away straight away. So I think I spent uh, most of this dive holding onto the poles and um, yeah, taking shelter from that mad current that was ripping through. Um, just guiding along with my hands, uh, gripping onto the poles and um, trying to relax basically before I could um, send below the surface. Every time I'd descend to go down for a dive, um, I'd hit about five or six meters and it was just time to come back up. That current was just pulling me all sorts of ways. Um, I think just with the amount of piles there and the amount of uh, current that was just coming from all different angles it was just um, yeah making me really disorientated so um, I just sort of just hovered around on the surface holding onto the poles and um, seeing if I could um, have a good view of anything. After I felt relaxed enough I um, went down for another dive and spotted this mookie here um, trying to get away from me I gave it a bit of a spook um, yeah but unfortunately I missed it um, Took a bit of a long shot, um, it was a bit of a gamble, I'm usually quite patient, but um, I think the combination of the um, anxiety of it being quite rough out there and uh, that tide pulling me through um, was probably one of the big, big factors why I uh, rushed the shot and missed it. After about uh, 15 or 20 minutes of uh, fighting against that intense current, I was almost about to call it quits. Um, I went down for one last uh, dive, um, 
roughly six or seven metres and came across a wee school of muki, maybe five or six of them and um, yeah, it landed a good shot on um, the biggest one I could see. Uh, so the shaft penetrated through both eyes. Uh, now I'm just uh, giving the fish a knife to the brain and bleeding it out through its gills. This will first of all just help to limit the fish's suffering and also improve the quality of the meat. Uh, while I'm taking care of this fish, uh, I'm still getting pulled away by that current. Um, it's pretty rough out now, it's, it's picked up a little bit so it's time to mission back to the boat, um, get this fish on deck. I can't think of a better way to respect this fish than to utilise as much of it as I can so we'll go in some nice fillets and uh, everything else will probably get chucked in the smoker. So back on dry land now and the boats will be cleaned up, I'm just getting ready to process this fish, this beautiful beautiful fish. Uh, this species is a blue moki and the legal size limit is 40 centimetres. This one here that I've taken uh, from the ocean today is 50 centimetres so it's not a huge fish but also not a small fish, um, it all tastes the same. I've only recently learned to fillet fish, a few pointers from my sister-in-law and um, few YouTube videos and um, yeah I'm just learning every day as I go along. Um, I can't think of a better way to respect this fish than um, using everything that I got off it so everything will be used from this fish. I'll make a raw fish um, out of the fillet, um, the skin and possibly the frames will be used as some burley so I can burley it up next time we go out fishing and I'll smoke that head I think uh, with some nice manuka smoke. Okay, so I'm gonna make some raw fish out of this. Um, obviously though, two fillets is quite a bit of flesh, so um, what I'm actually gonna do is save one fillet for myself, the raw fish, and I'm gonna vacuum pack um, one of the other fillets and give it to one of my bros, uh, the Tongan bro, Cassie. Um, this is his favorite fish, so yeah, I'm sure he'll appreciate that as well. Um, I'm not greedy, I like to share it out. So yeah, um, keeping it Keeping it uh, vacuum packed and all the air out of there just really improves the quality of the fish. Um, so there's a handy wee, um, handy wee machine I've got. Um, seal it all up and uh, makes it nice and fresh for another day. Uh, so I'm going to be preparing a basic raw fish with these fillets. Um, I'm going to use this lemon juice to marinate it through and half sort of cook it for about half an hour um, then I'm going to be adding in some tomatoes some cucumbers uh, got the spring onions there as well for a bit of zing and we'll top it off with some salt and pepper um, just your basic spices uh, maybe some chili as well uh, once that's all done you want to add your coconut milk or your coconut cream uh, depends on the way you like it I like uh, coconut milk just so it's not so heavy uh, a lot of people use coconut cream though So I've diced the fish up now and just want to add in the lemon juice, um, just make sure it's all covered and uh, give it a good mix around. Now after mixing that around you want to let it sit for about at least half an hour I reckon. So I've drained most of that lemon juice out now, so I'm just going to add in the spices now, a bit of salt, a bit of pepper, I'll give that a mix around first. And then we're going to chuck in uh, all the vegetables. Mix that around once again. Just combine that all together. And 
for the special stuff. Well, here we go. Boom. You doing, buddy? How you doing, buddy? Okay, so I've got this uh, fish frame and the heat in here at the moment, smoking. Uh, this should be really pretty damn soon. It smells tasty already. Sweet guys, so we've come to the end of the video now. Uh, thanks for watching my first catch and cook. Um, I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, Kai Down Under, and uh, also follow me on all my social media as well, um, just to help get the philosophy of Kai Down Under out there. Um, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.